Hi everyone and thank you for joining this session about scaling your company with Monday.com. Today we're going to really be focusing on the best practices that we've learned working with thousands of companies on how you can best scale your Monday.com account. So let's dive straight into it. First a quick introduction. My name is Aaron Fuysche. Yeah, it's a little bit of a weird last name, that's because I'm from the Netherlands. I'm the director of enterprise sales here at Monday.com and started our first two sales teams. The one over here in our headquarters in Israel and then I moved to New York to set up our sales team in New York. I was born in Amsterdam and joined Monday.com in February 2016 as so about the 20th employee. And a fun fact from the employees still at Monday.com today, I've been the 11th employee that joined the company. So what are we really going to be focusing on today? The main part is focusing on how can we create structured growth in your account while you're scaling with Monday.com. This is going to allow us to create that organizational alignment, making sure that everybody in the organization knows what we are working towards and has complete transparency. On top of that, it's going to allow us to pull very easy insights and reports across everything that happens within your Monday account. We're going to focus on the importance of communication and collaboration to be able to scale your account effectively and also quickly because speed is crucial the moment that you create any type of transformation. And moving people from one platform to the other is one of those transformational types. And finally, we're going to focus on how we can re reduce that resistance to change to make sure that everybody is on board to scale that Monday.com account and getting all of these benefits out of the platform. So. We're going to talk about the three ways that organizations scale their Monday.com account. And these three ways connect mainly to a top-down or bottom-up approach. If you're looking at the enterprise-wide transformation, meaning the whole company comes on board in one go, it is more of a top-down approach. And the benefits from a top-down approach is that the whole organization is immediately involved from day one. All of the relevant stakeholders, the executives, and the ability to really focus on those high-level objectives, those key results that you want to accomplish, and creating transparency throughout the whole organization so that we all know what we're working towards, have all of the relevant stakeholders already involved, and immediately get all of these benefits from cross-departmental collaboration and the ability to quickly identify if there's any bottlenecks or efficiency improvements that we can make within our process on an organizational scale. The second way of skill is structured adoption. Structured adoption is focusing on identifying one specific team or department that will be coming on board, but already looking ahead. Who are those next departments and teams that are going to come on board? And you really want to focus here on collaboration. The more collaboration there's between the departments, those are most likely the relevant one to come on board as the next step. And then finally, we go to organic growth. Organic growth is that situation where you are coming into uh, existence and familiarity with Monday.com, but nobody else from the organization is really defined yet that they are going to join you on this journey. You might be an individual, you might be coming on board as a team, but you're really focusing on your personal processes. Now, because of the addictive nature of Monday.com and also the ability to so easily share all of the information across the organization and with different colleagues and people within your team, very quickly other people are going to already see what you are actually accomplishing with your Monday account. This could happen through our form functionality by making it extremely easy for any of your colleagues to sharing information and bringing it in, for example, intake requests. But it could also be through the broadcasting, so you're going to have one of the dashboards inside of your organization, getting a report about one of the projects that your team member is working on. And we see that this really creates a scenario where very quickly other people of the organization are coming on board. But they come on board one by one without a very specific plan. And that's where we're looking more at that organic growth. So the three ways of growing your Monday.com account, enterprise-wide transformation, structured adoption, and organic adoption. So let's dive a little bit deeper into it. Now, what is really most important to keep into consideration? It's all about structure and optimizing early for skill. It doesn't really matter whether you start with that organizational enterprise-wide transformation, or utilizing a structured adoption, or even the organic adoption. The key is setting up your account for scale very early on and managing the onboarding of those new users, teams and departments that are coming onto your account. So do you know who actually are using your account today? And if the answer is no, the first thing that you want to do by the end of this meeting is exporting your user list, align it to your company directory and organize all of the users by team, department and manager. Later on throughout this uh, conversation, I'll actually show you how this allows you to very easily 
plug in all of those users that you have your, in your account already today into that organizational structure that we're going to establish inside of your Monday account. Now, how can you do this? You just simply go to your avatar, click on admin, and from admin, go to the user step. This allows you to, to use your CSV, quickly export that user list, and add on the additional information. So now that we're ready and we're actually knowing who are the people inside of our account, let's start talking about those best practices to scale your monday.com account. So the best practices that we're going to cover today is starting off with really defining your objectives, key results, and the stakeholders that need to be involved. Because if you don't define what your objectives and key results should be, then how are you going to be able to see success while scaling your account and getting to those results that you want to see? The second step is defining your account structure and workflow structure. Account structure meaning how are we actually going to set up our accounts and workflow structure is what are those processes that we're going to work towards to be able to uh, get to those key results that we want to accomplish. We're going to speak a little bit about communication because communication is extremely crucial in having the ability to not only skill but skill quickly and making sure that everybody is aligned on the goals that we want to achieve. This also significantly increases your chances of success. Then we're going to speak a little bit about account governance, making sure that we can make and keep and maintain that structure very organized. And of course, talk about training. How are we actually going to get all of those other teams, departments and users involved and on board, adopted to the platform? Once we finished all of these steps, the only thing that is still outstanding is focusing on continuous improvement. Because we always want to make sure that in anything that we do in our day-to-day, -day, in our processes, and while we're striving to get to those key results, we consistently want to focus on how can we continuously keep on improving our processes and getting to better results along the way. So let's start with the first part, which is objectives, key results, and stakeholders. Step number one is really defining those high-level objectives. What do we want to accomplish? A good example, as you can see over here, could be we want to grow our corporate business. Now the next step is, identify those actual results that you want to see. So we see a few different results over here, and I want to focus on one specific one, doubling our sales revenue from 100 to $200 million by the end of 2020. Now, any time that you're going to focus on your key results, you want to make sure that those results are smart. And when I'm talking about smart, I'm actually talking about abbreviation. The S is standing for specific. That key results need to be extremely clear. There shouldn't be any ambiguity about what it means or any uh, openness in regards to interpretation. It is very clear over here that we're talking about doubling our sales revenue from $100 million to $200 million by the end of 2020. So everybody is aligned and the goal is extremely specific. The second part, the M, is standing for measurable. Of course, any of these key results need to be measurable because else how are you going to define whether you see success or failure? How are you going to define how you can actually improve those processes and get to that continuous improvement? So you want to make sure that any of those results are measurable. And as you can see over here in this slide, what we're focusing on is putting very clearly down where are we in 2019, where do we want to be in 2020, what is the actual measurement that we're measuring by, in this case, millions of dollars, and having those results tracked. We want to have that date connected to it so that it is time-based and that we know exactly what we're striving towards. And finally, the last thing that you want to do is making sure to assign the relevant stakeholders because we want to move quick. So make sure that you assign, A, which departments are all involved in actually accomplishing these key results, and who are the people specifically accountable. As you can see over here on the slide, we have the departments defined, but we also have who's responsible. Our recommendation here is less is more. So try not to choose huge teams, but take one stakeholder for all the different departments involved in accomplishing this specific key result, and they are the ones that are accountable and starting to push forward to get to those actual key results. Now, how are we actually going to accomplish this? The first step is setting up your account structure so that it's really easy to scale. So within your account, the account is the company itself, you have different workspaces. And a workspace really allows you as a department to work within the departmental level and collaborate across your team, 
but it also still allows you those benefits to very easily collaborate with different parts of the organization. So you have your own instance, your own space to collaborate, while easily having the ability to invite anybody else to a specific project within that workspace. Now the way that we recommend and the best way that we saw this actually working across all the thousands of organizations that we worked with is by organizing it by departments. So your first workspace is your organizational workspace. This is, on, is for the whole organization. From there on, each of these workspaces is organized by a specific department within your organization. What do we really want to see in the company workspace? In the company workspace, we want to see anything that helps and is relevant for everybody on the organizational level. Think about an onboarding board to make it really easy for any new employee that comes on board to quickly see how they can utilize the platform. Think about your company objectives and key results to create transparency across the organization so that everybody is know what we are aiming for, what we are trying to achieve. Have your company announcements there, anything that is relevant for everybody. For example, we have a new company event coming on. And finally, put in those organizational templates. You might establish a very efficient template for projects. This is relevant across all of the different departments that you're working with. So put those templates in your organizational workspace. From there on, we want to start organizing the different departmental workspaces. And our recommendation is within your workspace of your department, there's three important types of folders that you want to set up. The first one is your team folder. It's going to be connected to everything that you're discussing on a team level. It could be your team meetings, it could be accomplishments that you want to get to as a team. Everything that's related to the team picture goes into your team folder. You have your individual folder, which is for any of your team members, where they can work their to-dos and anything that's specifically related to the team itself. And then finally, you have those folders for the large initiatives, so that we can really easily keep on following them. Now, don't be concerned that this is going to create too much noise because the only folders that you're actually able to see are those folders that include some information, some boards that you are actually subscribed to. In the case that those folders, for example, the individual folder is not relevant to you, I won't even be able to see the folder of my colleague because nothing relevant is connected towards me. So that folder I won't be able to see or any of those boards that are included in it. Now, the last thing that you want to keep in consideration, we also have the ability to create our complete own structure by utilizing our favorite section. So this allows us to keep control on an organizational level. But if there's any specific individual employee in your organization that prefers to see his personal structure slightly different, then he can take advantage of our favorites section. So now we're coming to the next step. And the next step is define your workflows and templates. The first step is identify the workflow experts. We want to make sure that we involve those people that actually have the most experience with doing the actual work. They're going to be most familiar with what we need to accomplish, what is working today, and what we need to adjust. So those are the people that you want to empower. And that empowerment is extremely important. Communicate the trust that you have in them. Empower them to have the ability to make changes. Don't micromanage the actual change because it's going to delay the process and slow it down significantly. We want to make sure that we can move quick and that they can work and do the job that they need to do. So define your workflow experts. Once you have those workflow experts, we're actually going to define the workflow, meaning what are the processes that we need to work on to be able to establish those key results that we set earlier on. Once we define how we want this workflow to look like, we want to start optimizing. And when I talk about optimizing, what I'm talking about is utilizing our automations and integrations. We always say anything that could be automated should be automated. Remove the redundant work. There's really no reason to send a manual email if you can automate the process and immediately update the relevant stakeholders once you finish your part of the process and the next department, team member, or even client knows that they can start working on their part or that the project is done and that they're all updated. So utilize those automations to notify the relevant stakeholders, move information to the locations that it is most important making it so much easier to see all of the different analytics. And of course, also use it for any dependencies that you want to set. For example, if one of these projects delays, I might want to have all of these other projects delay as well because they're completely connected towards each other. This is something that we can accomplish with our automations. The second part of the optimization is integrations. 
If there are any other platforms that you're utilizing, you want to make sure to pull all of the information in that one source of truth. So that it makes it really easy for us to see everything that is connected to that process that we're working on. So integrate your different tools inside of your Monday account. An example, as a customer success, if you're utilizing Zendesk and you want to pull some of the information from Zendesk into Monday to be able to optimize your workflow, make that integration. And there's good news. We have hundreds of native integrations already today and Zendesk, Jira, Salesforce are all part of them. Now when we finished all of this, we want to actually create our templates. These templates are going to allow everybody in the organization to take advantage of what uh, we already did. For example, those project templates are going to be relevant for all of the different departments. The next topic is communication. Communication is extremely important and this really allows us to be able successful. Step number one is communicate the why, the how, and the when. The why is why are we actually making this change? And we already identified that by focusing on those objectives and those key results that we want to accomplish. The how, we already identified by actually building out these workflows. What processes are we going to use to accomplish these results that we're aiming for? And the when, when does everybody in the organization gets involved? When are we going to actually start onboarding on the platform? By when do we want to be able to see those results so that everybody knows what is the actual uh, process coming up? What is really important here is to create transparency alongside these objectives and key results. And there's multiple ways on how you can do it. A, you can do it in your company meeting by defining why did we chose these specific objectives and what are those results that we want to see. We also have a broadcast functionality that allows you to actually put these objectives and visualize it throughout your organization by utilizing different types of dashboards. Or even making it the main page in your Monday account. So that anytime that somebody logs in, the first thing that they see is those objectives and key results that we set together. But we also need to do it through communication. We're communicating it in our company meeting to focus on those high level objectives. Then in our department meeting to focus on what our impact is on those key results and what is expected from us as a department, all the way down to the team meetings on how is it actually going to impact my day to day. So for example, from a sales aspect, that could mean on a day to day level, what we are aiming for is to reduce our qualification calls uh, with 10 minutes to be able to have so many more clients on the phone, to reduce our demonstrations from an hour to 45 minutes while still maintaining the same value. This is going to allow us to get so many more prospects on the call and grow our organizational revenues. So this brings us to the account governance. Of course, we want to make sure that our account is set up successfully and safe. So step number one is really defining how do we onboard new users. And one of the advice that I have over here is actually utilizing our form functionality. This allows you to share it with any person in the organization. And if they want to join your Monday account, all that we're asking from them is to define who are they, which team are they part of, which department are they part of, and who is their manager, so that we can easily pull them into that organizational structure. From there on, what we want to make sure is how do we actually give them access to the platform? We can use two-factor authentication, we can do uh, password security settings, or we can use single sign-on. We always recommend to utilize single sign-on because it makes it very easy for everybody to log on. It keeps your account secure, but it also makes it extremely easy to either provision or deprovision people to your account. From there on, we want to make sure that we define those workspace owners. Who are the people that are in control of each of the different workspaces departments so that they can immediately add any new member of that department to the relevant workspace? And of course, also to the relevant team structures. From there, we want to set our account permissions. Our account permissions are allowing us to say, what do we want each person in the account to be able to do? So for example, we might not want to have everybody in the account the ability to create shareable boards and share information with people outside of your organization. We might want to restrict, uh, restrict certain integrations so that they can be used. And there's many, many more examples. So this is what we're doing in our account permission setting. We're defining who has the ability to do what in the account so that we can maintain control. And then finally, if you go to the more granular level, the board permissions, meaning can everybody make changes on the board? Can they only view the board? Or can they do everything on the board besides changing the structure? And even going into the columns and item permissions, who do we want to be able to see each of these columns and items? Or who do we want to be able to actually make changes towards them? The last two, board permissions and column and item permissions, are much more happening on the team level. 
If we're looking at the account permissions and the workspace, that should be on an organizational level. So make sure that your account is secure and make it as easy as possible for yourself. Anytime that somebody gets provisioned in your single sign-on solution, automatically send them that email, pointing them towards all of the relevant information that you already have inside of your account. For example, that onboarding board, those objectives and key results that we're working towards. This really is going to make the onboarding much easier for them. Who is the internal expert that they can speak to and who is the support on their Monday site? Definitely want to make sure to include that in that welcoming email after provisioning those new users. Now we're going to talk a little bit about training because it's of course important to get everybody adopted to the platform. The first thing is start simple. Don't make it overcomplicated. And the good news is we pretty much took all of the steps already to be able to do this. We defined what is the actual workflow that we're going to work for. So instead of teaching somebody in a two hour session everything that Monday.com can do, we want to focus on how they can start immediately utilizing the platform. Okay, so keep it focused and focus on what each individual needs to know. Teach them how they can work on the existing workflow and how it's going to make their life so much easier. Start simple and from there on start optimizing the process further and further along the way. Record your sessions. I can guarantee you, especially in larger organizations, not everybody will be able to join every single training. By recording your sessions, it doesn't only allow to share it with those people that missed the specific training sessions, but it also allows you to share it with any new employees that come on board or any employees that became part of your specific team or department. So definitely record those sessions that you're working towards while you're training the team. Focus on the why for them. And what I mean with that is focus on the team that you're training at that specific point. What is the value for them? Don't tell to the team of individual contributors how it's going to help me as a manager or you as a manager to see everything that they're working on and kind of going into that micromanagement. That is absolutely not the goal for Monday.com. Focus on how it's going to help them. It's going to be so much easier to see all of the work that is assigned towards you. If you need any help, in the click of one button, it's going to notify the relevant people so that we can support you to be as efficient as possible. It's going to save you all of that time from moving from one platform to the other. In short, focus on how this is going to make their day better. This really helps with adoption, it empowers employees and it makes the transition much, much smoother. Identify some internal experts. And usually these internal experts are the same people that worked on the workflow. It's not always the case, but in most cases what we see is those people that helped us to build out the relevant workflows are also becoming those internal experts. Why is it so important to have internal experts for each department that is utilizing the platform? Is because this is a great way of optimizing those best practices. Think about a quarterly meeting where you're talking about, hey, in our team we actually were able to reduce our onboarding process with our team members by building this workflow that allows us to move our onboarding process from two months to only two weeks, which by the way is a real example of what we did internally, moving our onboarding process from a two months process to only a three week process. And of course, leverage our team, leverage resources. We have tons of relevant videos. With our enterprise plan, we have dedicated success managers that can really help you. And we also have 24 seven support. So utilize all of those great resources that we already laid out for you to be able to easily onboard on the monday.com platform. And we're already getting to the final part of this presentation. And maybe the most important part, consistent improvement. How can we focus on that continuous improvement throughout everything that we do? Step number one, regularly check those actual results versus your expectations. Okay, we wanna see how we're tracking and we also wanna communicate this to the rest of the organization. Sharing this information with everybody else empowers and makes everybody feel part of that change. It will really motivate them to focus on how can we be part of it to help improve these processes. Analyze the bottlenecks. Understand where do we see that something is missing and where can we actually improve the process. And from there on, focus on those quick wins and long-term wins. An example of a quick win could be, we see that we're losing a lot of time on an approval process. How can we actually optimize this by immediately notifying those relevant stakeholders through the Monday platform, allowing them while they're walking from meeting to meeting to immediately approve something instead of waiting for hours and hours to do it quickly on the go on their mobile phone. A long-term win could be, 
we see that we're actually getting great results and we want to uh, optimize this. We want to start hiring another 50 employees. This is obviously going to take a little bit more time, but it is one of those optimization points where we can see we can really benefit from it because we are much more efficient and we're making much more money per employee than we're actually spending. So focus on that consistent improvement. And how do you do that most successfully? Again, by focusing on measuring all of the results. So what you see right here is one example of a dashboard, and this can completely be tailored according to any of the information that you want to see, on how are we tracking on our objectives? What is the actual organizational revenue that we're setting right now? And is anybody overwhelmed? So in this example, we can very quickly identify that Manzi actually has too much work on our plate so that we can easily, uh, uh, safely sharing it throughout the team so that everybody has the same amount of workload and can work as optimized as possible. This also allows us very easily to dive into the details. If we see that something is stuck, we can immediately drill down and in one click understand what is the bottleneck, how can we help and get involved from day one. It also allows all of us to see if we're tracking towards those key results that we want to accomplish very effectively. And from here on, uh, one more example of how one of these dashboards could look. So here we're looking a little bit more high level. What is that company growth that we're looking at? Where are we standing across all of the projects in our organization? This really allows us to keep scale on that high level objective. Where are we standing on an organizational level, department level, and team level? So ending off with those final recommendations, we highly recommend to start off with the enterprise-wide transformation. The main reason for this is because it allows from day one to really make sure that everybody is aligned throughout the organization and getting most of those benefits of optimizing between and across different departments. It also allows us to immediately focus on all of the processes that we need to go through. Think about legal, security. By immediately going company-wide, we can go through one process that allows the whole organization to use it. And if you're scaling it in different steps, you'll see that you need to go through this process in many cases multiple times. Because each process slightly changes based on the number of people that come onto the platform and the type of data that you actually put inside of the platform. But of course, this won't be possible for each and every one of you. And sometimes we need to start a little bit smaller. So in that case, we can start with structured adoption. Really think about which teams could benefit most from having this organizational platform that really help us to optimize any of our processes, collaborate and communicate across the whole organization to get to those best results. What is the team or the department that we start with? Who do they collaborate with? And who are the next people that we're going to bring on board? And then finally, if you just really enjoy the platform and you started working out on it and you want to see that growth, but it's very organic, it's one user at a time, make sure that you follow those steps that we said before. Still set up your account for scale. Have those departmental uh, workspaces set up. Make sure that any new user that starts utilizing it actually fills out that form so that while we're organically growing throughout the account, we're still keeping that structure and still having the ability to point everybody to the work that we already did. For example, those templates that we built out earlier. Now keep in consideration, these were some of the best practices. We work with thousands of organizations. There always are differences. So don't hesitate to reach out to our customer support team. If you want to know how you can best scale your specific Monday account based on your processes, reach out to them and they will connect you with one of our account managers to really help you to get to the best results in the most optimized way. Have a great day, everyone.